What's going on, guys? Thank you for tuning in to Sartin Garage. And today I'm going to be showing y'all how to uh, test a, a key switch. There's four simple steps for a key switch that you need to check if you have a suspicion your key switch is bad and, and you want to test it. So let's get started on it. Alright guys, I'm going to show you how to test this switch. Um, this is the most common switch. It's used on a lot of uh, AYPs, Husqvarna. A lot of them use the same switch. Some of the difference, like this one, shows headlights right here. Um, I know MTD likes to put a, it looks like a little uh, garden tractor right there. And it's for a uh, backup. So in order for you to back up, you have to flip the switch to here to get it to where it'll back up without the engine dying. But um, it does the same thing pretty much on the switch. So let's get started on this thing. Um, on the back side, there is letters on the key switch can you see that like here is B A2 this is A1 right here this one has a L right there that's lights G is ground and then you got a S, which is here. Right there's the S. That stands for starter solenoid. And then you got a M, which is here. That stands for magneto, um, which also means ignition coil. And then you've got the B right there, which means battery. That comes from the battery post positive side of the starter solenoid. So your battery cable goes from the positive on the battery to the battery post side of the solenoid. And there will be an additional wire connected to that which goes to here. But let's test this switch and I'll show you what the switch is supposed to do. First, we'll do the lights um, test on the switch. Um, the lights will go from L2 to A2. So, I've got this meter here, which is a, a little bit fancier meter, but you may have one that's like this. It doesn't matter. Just make sure you put it on ohms which is this right here and a lot of them have a buzzer which is a big help but flip that around there to there that's resistance which is ohms you're checking resistance um, on this meter it's the exact same symbol right here can you see that looks like a little Wi-Fi thing and then you got your ohms emblem but that's for continuity we'll set that right there get it to where y'all can see it without light in the way somewhere in there I guess anyway it's got a buzzer you'll hear it so I've got these little fancy dancy alligator clips. They just plug into this meter, but uh, that helps a lot. Because if you just have this, you gotta hold it on the, each terminal, both hands, and you're trying to turn the key and 
check it, but this makes it easier. Just plug that in there like that, and then you have alligator clips. So it doesn't matter which lead you connect to which terminal. The only way that matters is if you're doing voltage check. So resistance, it doesn't matter which one of these you put on which. You can put the red on the L and the black on the A2, which is what it connects to. All right. That grounds this L terminal, and that's what turns your lights on. Well, right now the key's off, so I'm not getting anything, any reading. So you want to hook them up and then turn the key on. Now I have resistance. You hear the buzzer? If I turn the key off, it goes away. That means when I turn that on to lights, which you can see in the switch, that it's pointed towards lights. If I turn it off, the buzzer goes off. That means that part of that circuit is working. It's doing what it's supposed to. So if your lights ain't working, and you do this test, then there's your problem. Your key switch is not doing what it should. So, next, we'll go to the charging on it. That's gonna be A1, which is here, to B. That will connect A1 to B. A1's the charging from your voltage regulator or if, if, if it's just, just got a stator and no voltage regulator, it will go to this terminal also. But inside the switch, when you turn this on, it allows the charging to go to battery. So you're going to connect A2 to the B on the back of the switch. And then you're going to turn the key on. And once you turn it on, you should hear the, you should hear that buzzer. Turn it off, it should go away. So, that part's working. So if you're having a problem with charging, and you're thinking it's not making it through the switch, if you check this terminal and you have 14 volts on the connector side, but then you check the switch and it doesn't read when you turn the key switch on and your problem is inside this switch. It has to connect that power, that charging power to the battery. If it don't, then it's not working inside this switch. Okay. Next, we're gonna go to the starter solenoid. I know a lot of y'all have this problem right here is when your your mower won't start. Rather, should I say, you turn the key over, the battery's good and charged, and it does nothing. It does nothing. Well, here's your battery to your solenoid. A lot of people think that S means starter. It, it kind of does, but it actually goes to the solenoid. That's what the S actually means is a solenoid. But, um inside the switch when you're in the start position you're connecting b to the s so you want to connect one of these to the b and then connect the other one to the s and then when you go to the start position on your key switch those two should connect inside the switch so put the key in there's lights on you get nothing and you shouldn't in either three of them positions the only position you should get any continuity is when i go to start i'm going to do that now there's your start i let off hit it again let off hit it again you want to do that a few times just to make sure maybe once it connects and then the next time it won't so just kind of on off on off on off and then if you do it once and it doesn't go off, then you're going to be like, uh, 
I probably ought to get me a switch. So, that test is done. This circuit's good. It's working like it should. And then your last one is to your ignition coil. That is M. That stands for magneto, which is ignition coil. So you're going to connect M to G. Now, let me disconnect that and explain this. This one can get a little tricky. Most ignition coils are not grounded to fire, which means it's an open circuit coil. When the circuit is open and the coil is not grounded, it will fire. When you turn the key off, it grounds M to the G right here. And that grounds the coil and kills it. Now, if the coil is closed to fire, which is really rare. I know some of the old lawn boys, they had a closed to fire coil, especially back in the 80s, um, 70s and 80s. They had coils that were grounded to fire. But most of them now will be open to fire. So when the key is off and you connect this, you're going to get resistance because the key is off. So when I connect that, that's on. That means it's connected in there because the key is off. Now when I turn the key on, right here, it should go off in either position. That means it opened that coil up. It's not grounded anymore. So then when you go to the start position, it starts the motor, the coil can spark. So when you're done mowing, you turn the key off, it just grounded that coil and it dies. And that's pretty much it, guys. Um, if your key switch is different, you know, especially some of the old metal ones and stuff, it don't have this A1, A2, um, which those are about gone. There's some still out there, but most of them are going to use this new plastic switch. Um, but... Um, if you, if, you, if you do pull your switch out and it's different and you want to know what the terminals are, like it's got a totally different letter on it or something, just, just leave me a comment in the comments and I will, I will respond to you to what that terminal is for. But um, that's it for this video, guys. A short and sweet, easy way to check that switch. Guys, thank you for watching that this video, and um, I hope the video helped you. I hope testing that switch helped you out, showed you how to check it for resistance. Um, if this video helped you, like the video, share the video, leave me a comment. Um, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already did that. And hit the little bell to get future videos. I'll be doing a lot more videos like this um, to help you guys out and show you how to check all this stuff. But uh, make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.